England has always seen itself as a proud footballing nation and over the years has produced some of the best players the game has ever seen, while also hosting one of the most prestigious league tournaments in the world, the Premier League. But it's easy to get caught up in the glamour and appeal of the big money teams of English football and overlook the importance of other levels of the game, such as the significant role played by grassroots football and non-league teams, and also how they help their local communities. To find out if grassroots football still has its influence and spark within the English game, I went to visit National League Southside Eastbourne Borough and spoke to a few of the people fortunate enough to be involved in the local game. This is Grassroot Glory. Well, my name's Ian Simpemba, I'm the club captain. I've been here for four years now. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. Ah, good, good. So, um, what's it like to be involved with a team like Eastbourne Borough? That's great. I've, um, I've been very lucky over my career. I've been involved with some really good football sides and clubs. Um, Eastbourne Borough is, um, is definitely up there with, with the best of them. The way that the clubs run, the lads that we've got here, the manager's very good, I think. Um, the AstroTurf the facilities we've got and as I said coming down from the manager he's, he's put an ethos in place at the football club that is always going forward so yeah no, it's really enjoyable Good, so I've been talking to a few of the people around and it seems like the club's putting a lot of effort into making it a big community thing do, do you feel like that's going to benefit the club a lot? Absolutely yeah, I mean I think the, the most successful lower league clubs League 2, League 1, the mm. conference you know and um, they always start on a, on a base of the local supporters in the community. And then when you go up to some of the biggest clubs in the world, you're talking your clubs like Liverpool, City, um, you know, your Arsenals, your West Hams, they're all built on the local community, you know, and, 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 and people from the area coming to watch and play. And I think that's essential as a football club to, to, do, to do well. You have to have that, that base um, around you. Today, Eastbourne Borough take on Truro City in the National League South, so I caught up with members of the crowd to ask them why they think local grassroots clubs are so important for the game. Well, it's just the friendly. We come down here, everyone knows one another. You can have a chat. Um, it's civilised. It's just so friendly and welcoming and safe and just such a lot of fun and you get to know the players and you can really feel part of what's going on. Uh, what I think about is so special about local football is it's grassroots football um, and it's uh, the beginnings of the next generation of players. So it's really important that we look after these places like East Mumbara. It's affordable yeah. and um, as I say friendly and um, part of, you're part of the community. You feel part of the community because that is the local team. A lot of us have been involved with the club ever since it was um, ever since it was formed. Um, you know, back in the 60s. So. You know, we just feel that close to the side that really doesn't matter anymore that the players come from distance. We're all still a family, you know. It's our club really, isn't it? It, is, know, it is. Hi, my name's Tommy Witherington. I'm the first team manager. Um, obviously, all football and issues at the football club. I've been here since February 2012. So just, just celebrated five years of being at the club. Oh, congratulations. What do you think it is about non-league and grassroots football that makes it so special and unique? Well, I can use one word for that. I think it's honesty. There's an honesty about the support. There's an honesty about the lads who play the game. Um, and in general, just the work ethic is, is far more honest. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that football is a great game, but a, but a very poor business in, in all levels of the game. And, and you know, loyalty is a very it's a word bandied about sometimes and, and expected, if you like, mm. from both ends of the spectrum. And, and, and loyalty is a, a difficult thing to, to see, but, but certainly fans and, and local people in grassroots football, mm. is de they're definitely honest and they're certainly loyal. Mm. So do you think the local residents offer a lot of support from the club and do they benefit? Yeah, I mean, I think people have got to realise, if you don't come from Eastbourne, there are actually three teams in Eastbourne that all carry the name of the town, and that's an unusual yeah. thing to have to, yeah, to yeah. sort of mm. compete with as ourselves, Eastbourne Borough, the youngest club, mm. as Eastbourne United and as Eastbourne Town. Now, we play at the highest level by by some distance. Yeah. Um, we've got to look outside the town because the local boys, if they're not good enough for Eastbourne Borough, they'll play for Eastbourne United or Eastbourne yeah. Town. Yeah. Uh, so we have to move our goalposts, if you like, a little bit further mm. uh, and bring them in from further afield. And it's not 
not it's not ideal but it's part of it we've got water behind us we've got a lot of marshland to our right and mm. we've got Brighton and Orvapian to our left so <laughs> we, we've got to go beyond all of that yeah. and um, you know it's it's it's, a, it's one of the most difficult points of my, my job is the recruitment side of it but it's something that we enjoy doing and we like to help and give younger players platforms mm. to uh, possibly push on themselves you know and, and that's happened certainly in the time that I've been here yeah yeah, OK, so one final question is recently the big non-league news has been teams like Lincoln to have an incredible success in the FA Cup. Do you feel like that motivates the players here to do well? Do you think that improves the reputation of non-league football as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I have an issue with the word non-league. I think it's better mm-hmm. semi-professional because yeah. since the huge influx of money at the very top of the game and therefore um, the massive amount of um guys who've come from Europe and further to play in Premier League football there's been a cascade or waterfall effect that's happened to the point where there are really good lads playing in semi-professional football or in the National Conference Mm. Conference South in my day which is only sort of 10 years ago in football playing playing wise they'd have been comfortable in League 1 or League 2 without a doubt so the standard of the top end of the semi-pro game or the non-league game as it's called is much much better than it was the the, the money's being spent by certain clubs in the National League and in the Vanarama North or, or South w- would be equivalent to what people were getting paid 10 years ago in League 2 in League 1 possibly in the Championship in some some respects it's one one every year on year somebody always makes you know an upset and whether that's a really low grassroots team beating a conference side or like we beat we beat a conference national side and then we're beaten heavily by another conference national side mm. but ultimately we've had a successful FA Cup run by getting to the first round proper to go further than that is what sort of dreams are made of for, yeah. for, for this level of football Yeah, in the past, the non-league has produced some big names in the game, such as Jimmy Billard, more recently the high profile, all the topics, all the talks been on Jamie Vardy, and even Les Ferdinand has come from non-league. So do you feel like there are any players at this current level at the moment who could possibly make up to that level? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you see them all the time. There's a very, very, having played in the, obviously not in elite level football, but having played in the football league, um, and you look at the difference... It's very, very small in some in some aspects, um, and that's proven, as you said, by lads who who go from the non-league into the football league and do well, and even from the football clubs. So, I mean, you've got to look at clubs like Burton Albion, um, Newport County, Crawley Town, Aldershot. They were all non-league clubs who've gone into the football league and done well, sustained themselves, and and then on the complete flip side of it that shows you that there is only a small difference. You look at clubs like Sheffield United now playing in League One and yeah. Portsmouth playing in League Two. Blackpool as well. Blackpool, yeah. there's a very, very small... I mean, I was amazed to look at at, um, at Stockport County playing in the Conference North. Now, I remember when they were, they were a championship, you yeah. know, so it's, mm-hmm. it shows you, as well as players, um, clubs are, you know, there's not a huge difference, so they can make that jump up. Yeah, so seeing teams like... Burton surviving and it look, look like they're going to survive in the championship this year and also teams like Bournemouth not just surviving but excelling to the Premier League is that a big inspiration for clubs like Eastbourne? Absolutely I mean I remember and we're talking about atmosphere I remember playing Burton Albion away in the conference and there was 500 people there at the yeah. most yeah. at the absolute <laughs> most there was 500 people there you know and you're talking you're talking probably eight seven eight years ago and um, you know now look at them new play, stadium play absolutely playing in the championship so mm-hmm. you look at and, and I mean I was at Crawley Town when it was a club that was a very similar size to this club mm-hmm. is now and it was run very similarly to how Eastbourne's run now and, um, you know and look at them they, uh, they've excelled and excelled and excelled so it's, it's, it's definitely an inspiration it shows you what you can do Not even the bitterly cold conditions of this early March evening could freeze the buzzing mood of this thrilling atmospheric game as Eastbourne Borough triumphed by two goals to nil over Truro City.